Hello and welcome to the Swing Smarter Hitting Training Podcast. This is your host, Joey Myers from HittingPerformanceLab.com. And with me, I don't know why, Chaz, we haven't done this sooner, but I want to welcome Chaz Henry of PowerChalk.com. Welcome, Chaz. Thank you, Joey. <laughs> and, and, and the answer is you hadn't asked me. Until I hadn't asked. I know. And I was like, why don't I have Chaz on? We, we have great conversations when we do this and we talk about some a so, uh, really cool new project that we'll talk about on this call here in a little bit. Um, but I, the biggest question I go, I get asked is what kind of video analysis software do you use? So I think this is a great episode for those instructors out there. You know, the parents, the team coaches, yeah, maybe they might use analysis software, but more it's, this one is going to be more for so for the instructors and the academy owners. So the question I get asked is what, video analysis software do you use? And so Chaz, give us a little bit of a, of a background on powerchalk.com. Well, I, I can only speak to one of those, Joey, and that's powerchalk. <laughs> and what it is, it's, it's a, uh, it's kind of labor of love. It's uh, lasted over a decade and it started with uh, me getting my golf swing analyzed in Orlando, Florida. And I, I had been crushing balls on the range and thinking I was doing certain things that when I saw it on video, I thought, you know, who's that guy? <laughs> uh, so, you know, you, you've said before, what you feel is not real. And that was true, really okay. true for me. So, you know, I went home being more geek than athlete and wrote a telestrator and playing uh, golf with a couple of the Cincinnati Reds showed them what I had. And by the end of that summer, they were all using it, all seven teams. Hmm. So it's called, you know, the, obviously the original, uh, one that I shared with them was a private site, but I, I then generalized it into powerchalk.com and, and it's available to anyone. And what's interesting is when I was on my own little research trying to find out what video analysis to use, a lot of them were you had to download bulky softwares onto the computer. So it's nice that this is, you don't have to download anything. You just go in and you can put video in and all, and all that kind of stuff. Yep. And that, that was the goal. You know, it was really to kind of democratize this, to bring it to everyone. And I'll be honest with you, uh, Joey, I should probably call you Joey Latz. <laughs> you're, 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 you're probably going to use a bunch of, you're going to name and reference a bunch of body parts that I can't pronounce, but <laughs> you know, I mean, to, to me, to me, that's the beauty of this whole thing. Cause we've got people from all angles meeting in the middle here mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, starting to, to break down swings. And you know, I see things in a very simplistic and you, you know, see a lot of the complexities there, mm -hmm. but I think that's the beauty of it. And, you know, that, that was really the goal is to get this to everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I to totally agree. Uh, and I've used it, I mean, probably around. So go through. Uh, well, first, before we even get through the nitty gritty of it, give people a background on, on where you're at, because they're going to go Chess Henry, who's this guy? He's got yeah. some video did, did analysis he, software. Who is he? Didn't he play high school baseball? <laughs> right. How many <laughs> how many at bats did he get in the big leagues? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I, and that's the that's the bottom line. I'm a I'm a propeller head. So mm -hmm. I'm an NC State computer science guy. Mm -hmm. who, you know, my master's thesis turned into a company that I sold. And, you know, I, I took a run at playing some serious golf and in the process uh, got really infatuated with video analysis. And so, so that's really my background. I'm coming at it, you know, from more of the computer science. And, and I realized very quickly that A, I wasn't going to be a pro golfer <laughs> and, and B, that my value, you know, in, in this world is to, I've always been good at writing software that lets you draw lines, arcs, and circles on things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one of the, one of the things that I see these days, it's not just about what you can see, what you can analyze guys like you who can see, you know, even further than I can into the video, but what you can communicate, you know, if I can't right. communicate that to a kid, it's, it's kind of lost, you know, it doesn't matter if I see it can, you know, can Johnny see it, you know, can Sally see it. Mm -hmm. And that, that's what I have focused on is, you know, building a tool that lets people see it. Right. Um, what I also find pretty fascinating about the, the history of power chalk, and we've had this conversation a few times. Can you go into that a little bit? So you started it and then you sold it and then you ended up back, back with it again. Can you go into that <laughs> sure. a little bit? Yeah. So, you know, like I said, it started off as, as kind of a, you know, a, a side project that just to see what I could do. Cause I, you know, the, the software they used at the Faldo school, I didn't love. So I went home and wrote it you know, being, mm. being a geek. <laughs> and, you know, once the, once the Reds and Dodgers, uh, one of them left and took it to the Dodgers. And once they started using it, it was game on, you know, because mm. they, they had an analyst on every team scrubbing video and, you know, got, got a lot more use out of it, which maybe explains some of the results that we're seeing lately. <laughs> uh, but, uh, 
you know, what, what happened is when I, you know, when I built a public site, uh, we had partnership arrangements with Little League Baseball, with USA Diving, with, you know, a lot of sports organizations. We got bought by a Hong Kong camera company. And uh, long story, but that, uh, you know, we, we sold a lot of cameras. We were kind of like the poor man's GoPro. Mm. And, but we also spent uh, too much money. And it, it kind of went <laughs> south and, you know, and it all came back to me. So, you know, it, it was at a pivotal moment you know, in the industry where uh, flash was going away and some technologies that I used. Uh, the other thing that was happening is machine learning. Mm -hmm. It was starting to work. And that's what I minored in at NC State. You know, I had a minor in uh, machine learning AI uh, back when it didn't work. And now that it's working, I started implementing some machine learning techniques. And, you know, if, we, if we've got time, I'll yeah, you know, go, show go you. into that. Go into that. Sh show you what I'm into. And uh, let me go ahead and just, uh, if you can uh, enable share. screen sharing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that'll I'll be good too. Up. And then uh, <clears throat> for those, I'll try and we'll see if we can describe what's happening here for those that are just listening on the podcast. Yeah, so if you see my screen here, what I've got, I've got uh, two batters side by side. This is one of the, you know, I, I coached Little League Baseball for uh, about 12 years. And, you know, I, I feel like I need to apologize to the to the kids in the first nine years. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't learn most of this until the last three. <laughs> but, you know, what you're able to do is you're able to put two batters side by side, or just look at, you know, at, at your own footage. And uh, I unashamedly borrowed slash stole from Don Slot the uh, keyframing system. Mm -hmm. So if you notice here, you know, I've got these two locked together, I can just jump them to load. And we can start talking to, you know, in this case, Cole, the batter about what's, what's the difference between you and Jose Batista, mm -hmm. who we have side by side. Let's talk about hand positions. Let's talk about being relaxed, you know, where your weight is. Let's jump to load. Mm -hmm. And you start to see some immediate differences in the two frames. So, so what I'm showing, regardless of what speed, you know, whether they're filmed with an iPhone or an Android, you know, I'm able to put two videos side by side and start seeing those differences. And I can just roll my mouse wheel or hit the, you know, plus, plus, plus increment frames. I can jump them to toe touch. So again, borrowed from Don Slot, you know, I took some of these really critical uh, key moments in the swing, which to me, toe touch almost says it all. Mm -hmm. And, and again, I, I won't, I won't try to preach to you, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that's where I start seeing most of the kids, you know, start, start to go south or, or take a left turn. Mm -hmm. and, and, you, and you see right here that Cole has already started to swing the bat at mm -hmm. toe touch and mm -hmm. Jose has not. And it's because so I'll grab my tools. You know, one of the other things you can do is you can uh, draw and annotate and you can, you know, voiceover. Cole is going to take this longer path with his hands. Jose is going to come right across his body. You know, so he's going to take that short path to the ball. And, and if you'll notice, really, he's not even, you know, he's not swinging his hands. He's moving his torso, which is pulling his hands. Mm -hmm. You know, Ted Williams said the hips lead the hands. And so that, the, the difference in the paths that they're taking is what tells Cole, it tells Cole and his brain, let's start swinging early. And, and it's correct, because if you're going to take that longer path, you need to start swinging a little early. Right. So yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's a little bit of, you know, uh, you know, my, my humble, uh, you know, baseball coaching, but also how to use the tool. Right. And, and again, what I can do is I can bring that to Cole's attention, you know, by, by drawing on top of his video or like we're doing here, just kind of freeze framing in key moments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what's cool about this, and we've had, we've had this talk before you and I on, on zoom talking, I wish that the audience could have could have been a fly on the wall with it. And so just setting it, setting this up just a little bit more. Cole is how old's Cole in this? Cole in this video, Cole's a junior in college now, but yeah, <laughs> uh, Cole at this moment is probably about 14, 14. And then yeah. he, he's in the left frame. And then you got Batista during one of the all-star home run derbies, I think uh, Correct. in the, in the right frame, obviously yep. this was what, five, six, seven years ago or something like that. This is 2015. Yep. 2015. Yep. yep. So um, what's interesting about these videos when Chaz was talking about a toe touch, uh, maybe bring it there, Chaz, to toe sure. touch. <clears throat> and he was, he was talking about that Cole was already starting to swing. And for those that are just listening to this, Cole is already starting to bring his barrel off his shoulder and his hands already starting to, to drop, start going into the zone. And Batista is, it hasn't yet. Batista's Batista still Batista looks that. like the MLB logo. It looks like the MLB logo. Right. And one of the other things that, that was interesting when we first went over this was the shoulder angle difference between Cole and Batista. And what you see is 
you see Cole at an upward angle, almost like he's going to throw a ball really far. And then you see Batista in a, in a slight downward angle. So that front shoulder is slightly lower than the back one. And as Chaz, you know, the, and, and most of you listening know, we do in the catapult loading system, spinal engine. One of the things that we want to do with our hitters is make sure that we have a slight downward angle at contact. And part of that is creating a tensional, some tension in the right places that where we see Batista having everything all loaded up at toe touch, he's yeah. ready to go and he can go at a moment's notice to, to be able to swing the thing where Cole, like Chaz was saying, is having to start a swing earlier because it, as a compensation to that being one of a few things that we could make a little bit better with Cole, but the, the up shoulder angle. So, yeah, I thought this was powerful when, when we saw it. And, and I love how power chalk again for instructors, Academy owners, uh, to be able to show your hitter uh, and with a video against Batista or uh, any of the guys now, you know. Yeah, whoever your model is. And, 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 you know, if you think about it, one of the really, uh, you know, foundational things that come out of this is Cole, you know, by the fact that he started to swing, and, I, and, and it could be 50, 80 milliseconds, mm -hmm. but he's going to make worse decisions. Yeah. Because he doesn't have the, you know, the added time that Jose has here to evaluate that pitch he's already started to swing because again he's got to go they're, they're going to meet the ball at the same place you know they're going to meet it off their front foot or you know in front of the plate there and you know cole has somewhat committed it's going to be hard for him to check up right right yeah and that kind of leads us into the the new project that you're working on where you're using your machine learning background and ai artificial intelligence uh, for those that, I mean, some, some listening are going to hear that and they're going to, oh my gosh, I don't want to hear it. Uh, so <laughs> he's ruining baseball. He's ruining baseball. Uh, <laughs> but I think, I think it's going to be a really good thing. And, and at kind of the end of this interview, people have a good idea of, of why this is really good, but start off. So what with machine learning and artificial intelligence, and this is again, some of the, goes back to some of the conversations we've already had. How does that help you? You can take these points in time in the swing and how does yeah, that help so machine learning? Yeah, so we already had key frames, right? And those are those key moments. And I've, you know, I've uh, deviated from Don Slot a little bit, and I've got 11 moments, and they're named slightly different. Uh, but what, I, what I've done is I've added key points. And by key points, if you're, if you're on the Zoom side of this, you'll, you'll see that I've turned it on for both hitters here. And you see exactly where his ankle, his knee, his hip, his, his ear, his eye is. And I, to, to my knowledge, the only one who's actually separated those layers. Mm. So I can lay it over top of the video or I can show just it. Yeah, and so I can a bunch of dots that, for those yeah, listening. Yeah, a bunch of dots a, at different, skeleton. different points on the body, at the shoulder, at the elbow, at the wrist, at the ankle. So we're seeing right now Chaz is, is taking the video where we see a normal video with all the dots on it. And then he can make it just a, a bones video where it just shows the dots connected by lines. So it's like a stick figure looks like that's going through the swing. And to your point earlier, Joey, uh, you know, to me, this is viva la conversation. I, I don't, you know, pretend that I'm, you know, changing the game or, or changing the way a coach coaches, just giving him more data. And, mm -hmm. you know, and I'll give you an example. If I say bone display here and I say, show me the tip of the bat. And by the way, let's also track the bat angle. Mm -hmm. So I say, okay, to all that, you see, you see the black line that it drew, you see how, flat cold swing is mm -hmm. let, let me do the same thing for jose show the tip of the bat and let's go over to track and show me the bat angle so right. you know what what was previously qualitative you and i looked and said well look jose hasn't started to swing mm -hmm. now it's quantitative mm -hmm. you know cole cole's bat is almost straight up it's five degrees with 12 o'clock noon being zero mm -hmm. and you know jose is exactly 45 mm-hmm so now that's qualitative. Now with qualitative, or I'm sorry, with quantitative comes the ability potentially to have a machine look at this and say, if, if Cole is at four degrees at toe touch, he's swinging too early, mm -hmm. right? So it, again, it goes from a, someone needing to look at this to, to a machine being able to say, hey, and this is where I think it goes, you know, I'm being a little futuristic here, but imagine a camera that while you're hitting a bucket of golf balls is telling you, Joey, you were three degrees early on that. And you opened up and, you know, and telling you, hey, you, you hit that one right on the screws. Mm -hmm. So you imagine hitting a bucket of balls with that kind of biofeedback, you know, versus just what you feel. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, that's where I think this goes. And I'll, uh, I'll turn this on. So what I've done is I've, you know, I have scrubbed 
the Dodgers uploaded over 40,000 videos to our site. Mm. And I, you know, I got the, uh, the privilege of sitting down with some of their coaches and, you know, and finding out what they looked for, you know, but also the, you know, the experience of watching a lot of those videos. So I have found what I believe are 10 things they all do. And you got the Craig councils of the world. You got your, you know, Kevin Euclid, you got yeah. some weird uh, <laughs> stances, but I believe they all do 10 things. And what I've done, I've codified that. And if you notice, I can kind of walk you through. And, you know, one of them is you coil against your backside without going over it. Mm -hmm. and, and I believe that's an absolute. So, so what I've done is I've kind of shown how the machine can grade you, you know, can look at these frames and grade you. And if you notice, I didn't, I didn't grade it, you know, 100 to zero. I graded it green, yellow, or red. Mm -hmm. So the machine said, hey, I looked at Cole here and he's green. You know, he has coiled against his backside without going over it. And now I'll go to the next you know, key frame, which is load. And I'm kind of between load and toe touch here. And I'll say, did he gain ground? Now, <laughs> having said that, we get into a whole nother debate, right? Yep. Is he a kicker? Is he a strider? Or is he an Albert Pujols, you know, heel down guy? Right. Because I don't want to judge him against the wrong model. And I believe there's more than one legitimate model. So having judged him as a kicker, you know, then did he gain ground? Did, did, can he translate that linear movement into rotational movement? And on that, you know, he gets a yellow. Mm. He, he gains a little ground. Did he stride more than 50% of his height, you know, when he did his kick? The answer is no, he got a red on that. Mm -hmm. So again, I, I, won't, I won't go through them all, but that's what the machine learning is attempting to do. Right. And, and, and people to understand that, I mean, you, you just, Chaz just talked about 40,000 swings uploaded into a system. And what that machine's doing is the more of those images, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, Chaz, but the more of those images at those different points or video, the, the better the machine learning gets. So if you just, it, up, oh, go ahead. That, that's correct. If they're labeled. If they're labeled, right. So, so, so where, you know, where we're at with machine learning, I mean, the beauty of it is you don't have to say, hey, the hands are expected to be above or below the shoulders. You just say, here's a good swing. You know, at toe touch, here's what a good swing looks like. And you show it, you know, Batista and Mickey Mantle and, mm -hmm. you know, and Willie Mays and, and you say, and let it find the commonality because here's a bunch of really good guys at toe touch. Here's some guys who are really bad, you mm -hmm. know, who have gone south by a toe touch and you, you let it then find the commonalities. Right. So, yeah, and, and here's the power of this. So Chaz kind of alluded to it on the, the golf swing and, and having a camera do capture and then compare using the machine learning to a, a really good golfer and spitting out that, that biofeedback. Um, the other thing is, and I liken this to that, that green, yellow, red. So I do search engine optimization on my site and there's a plus, there's a plugin called Yoast and Yoast will give you a green, yellow, or red light based on certain factors of SEO. And right. if it's red, then you go in and you fix it and you make it green. And that's, that's the whole purpose of that, that, um, you know, widget or whatever is to help you do better at SEO on your site. So this would be for SEO for your swing. You would get a, <laughs> right. So you would, yeah, you, would you would get a, a video. A parent would film a video, would record it, yep. put it through Chaz's system. And this is the new project that we're talking about. And that machine learning would give you based on Chaz's 10 criteria or, or other criteria, it would give you these green, yellow, and red lights. And so a parent can go right in and say, okay, well, this area, let's fix all the reds. And then when you get all the reds turned to green or yellow or whatever, then start fixing on the yellows. And this is not something that people have right now. I mean, it's but, exactly. And, and Joey, I, and I'd like to get your comments on this too. Um, I'm wrestling, you know, with, with a couple elements of it, because I really hope to get it, you know, in, in production soon and certainly by, you know, spring training of next year, but I've got, sure. uh, I'm neck deep in it. <laughs> I, I believe that you stop uh, at the point where they've got a red or two, because as a kinetic chain, it does mean no good to talk about whether you rolled wrist or not, mm. you know, if you're swinging the bat way too early. Mm -hmm. So, you know, let's, and, and I believe this makes it more of a system, you know, where someone could, you know, literally use it as a coach by, you know, like you said, go in and fix the red. Mm -hmm. but let's fix it before we move on. Mm -hmm. You know, let's get that elbow in a little bit more, or let's get that elbow up higher. If you notice the, the frame I'm stuck on right here, Cole is pulling with both hands, mm -hmm. you know, so he's got the back 
you know, arm out in front of the bat, uh, just as the front arm is. Right. The and until we, until we fix some of those things, it really is irrelevant, you know, to look at seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Well, well, good example of that is I have typically, if I have a hitter that's stepping out, stepping in the bucket, mm -hmm. typically, especially with the younger ones, they've been hit a few times with the pitch. So yeah. then what we have to do is we can't just fix the stride. We can't go to the stride because they got that fear is in the way. So we have to teach them how to turn away from the pitch coming in, turn, bringing the bat down. You know, we have to teach them how to get rid of the fear first That's and right. then we correct the stride. So that the, the stride is a compensation because of the fear. But then there's another time where I just, I had a girl or have a girl right now that I've been working with who is a junior in high school. She's stepping out. And she's tough. And she, she'll tell you, I don't care if I get hit by the ball. She's not scared of the ball. But then when I slow her down, put her in a power chalk type of software, slow the swing down. And I look and what's, what she's doing is her barrels getting really flat at landing and it's getting behind her and almost wrapping behind her head, mm -hmm. like a bat wrap right. type situation. Yep. And so that now it's not the problem of the fear it's that she's not in an optimal position with the barrel. So once we get that barrel to come up and, and, and part of it too, was we were getting her to, to really squeeze her back scapula hard, you know, keep that. And that'll, that'll help to bring that barrel back up again. So we were doing both barrel, bringing it up into that 45 degree that you were talking about with Batista. And yep. we were getting her to squeeze that back uh, scapula. So once we got that fixed, now she's got room because she didn't have room before to get to that inside pitch. She was getting jammed all the time. And that was come to find out after I, I, I talked to her, she goes, yeah, I'm getting jammed all the time. I, that's why she's stepping out. So once we fixed the, where the barrel was in the scap, the scap load, then we were able to fix her stride. And now she's striding. Perfect. There you go. And teaching yeah. her barrel path and how to get to that inside pitch properly. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's, that's something that would be like a red that we could look at and like Chas says, fix the red first and, and don't maybe not even maybe bring it to green. Maybe that's the answer. We don't even have to bring it to yellow, but bring it all the way to green before yeah. we move to that next red. Well, and for me, that's one of the epiphanies here. You know, mm -hmm. I've shared this with coaches through the years and through my coaching years. And you know, what I found is a lot of the coaches who had a strong desire to use the tool, uh, just didn't have the background and didn't understand that this is a kinetic chain mm -hmm. that you can't go fix. Well, let me talk about your wrist roll. Well, no, let's, you know, if I've done three things wrong prior, let's, you know, we got to go mm -hmm. back far enough in the chain. So I think that's one of the epiphanies here is to understand that this is a kinetic chain mm -hmm. and there are optimal motions. You will never see a skater do a triple axle with their arms out. Right. <laughs> if they don't bring them in, they're not going to spend. Yeah. They're not, they're not going to be at the Olympic level at least. No. Uh, <laughs> so I, you know, I think with that understanding comes uh, a new realization. You know, I had so many parents that, uh, you know, spent, spent money on, uh, you know, the stealth, the, the latest stealth bat, right. You know, as opposed to, you know, spending money with Joey Latz and yeah. uh, having him tell me about scap load. <laughs> right. And then that's fine. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't mind, you know, my hitters do the same thing. They buy the nice expensive, red yellow bright colored bat you know <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that sure no. but what's really cool with this is that we could make it as objective as possible when it goes to the machine learning it's looking at ten thousand yeah. different uh, photos of the best hitters of like you said the dodgers or or whoever the best hitters so when you put a hitter or a video through this it's not like it, you're getting joey lats uh my my <laughs> bias on this right you're getting the machine learning you're getting that as an objective yep. measure of what's going on. And then if you want to show that to a Joey Latz or a Chaz Henry, then, then you can do that as well. But also from some of our talks, we've talked about that you can, we can mold this into uh, a Joey Latz type of, of thing where we're looking for catapult loading system markers, right? We're looking yep. for uh, the, the down shoulders. We're looking for the, the pinch. We're looking for different things like that. So we can do that as well, but it's all based on the machine learning video. It's not based on my eyeball and my brain and, you know, whether I'm making stuff up or I'm not, it's the machine that's doing it. Exactly. And, and you know what I would suggest to not, not to be too full of, you know, my, myself on the <laughs> propeller head side, uh, this is an assistant, mm -hmm. you know, right. Uh, right. In, in no way would, would you and I have a machine learning you know, some kind of AI expert tell our surgeon what to do. Yeah, <laughs> it tells the surgeon, "Hey, I counted the white blood cells, and here's what I see." Right, and have him and then interpret. So I don't pretend at all that I'm doing away with you know I'm automating a, a real hitting coach. You know, I I see it as a second opinion, mm -hmm. and you know more so than that, I see it as a hopefully an introduction to these you know 
early players and parents that this is, you know, about the kinetic chain and this is something that you need to, you know, tune into. It's not about getting, you know, new, new dry fit and a new bat. <laughs> right. Yeah. This, <laughs> Although that's cool. Yeah. And, and it, you know, the, the things like hit tracks, like we call them the expensive calculators or expensive video games, which are so fun, but yep. they're, they're expensive and it's not something a parent, unless they got their well-to-do can spend 20 to $30,000 to have a hit tracks. Or even if you, you go to the knob trainers, the, mm-hmm. the ZEP, which isn't really around anymore because they got obliterated in lawsuits, but like Blast Motion and, yep. and Diamond Kinetics, their swing tracker. And those are great too. Those I, I've used those. I love using those for swing experiments and also parents that are tracking their kids, the, the, the bat speeds and the angles, the barrel angle attack angles and things like that. And that's great. And those things will tell you what the numbers are. They're, they're mm-hmm. a calculator. They'll tell you what those numbers are, but there's not going to tell you how to fix or make better some of those numbers, how to optimize right. those numbers. And, and, and it's also, you know, I would argue not necessary, you know, for Cole here that we've been looking at, you know, Cole is casting mm-hmm. and, you know, it, it's not even necessary to fix some of those, you know, what I, you know, in the medical world, they call them gross abnormalities. Yeah. You know, let, let me see you walk down the hall and let me see if you've got, you know, asymmetry or a limp or something. You know, I mean, a good coach can tell you that. And that's what I'd like to teach the machine to do mm-hmm. is, is find the obvious things. And then we get down to, you know, are you, are you breaking, you know, three degrees early or late? You know, that, that's where you start to bring in more data. But I think to, again, I'm trying to promote a, just a, a very wide and general understanding, you know, of what a good swing looks like. Mm-hmm. And you know what, what else is interesting? I don't know if, I don't know if we've talked about this, but I know you do a lot of work or help with the PT side, physical therapy, right. biomechanics, things like that. And, and not just the hitting side, but in walking and running and whatnot, what might also be interesting is if we see in a swing, we see a, a immobile ankle, may, there, there's a certain, maybe in the machine learning on mm-hmm. the PT side, there is a healthy ankle and there is a dysfunctional ankle. And what also would be cool is that we could recommend mobility exercises or stability exercises in the case of the core, right? Uh, that could spot the machine learning could spot that. And they can also prescribe an ankle mobility. You know, that'd be kind of interesting too. Right. No, that's exactly right. And, and, and the, and the site, and it's been a lot of fun because the site has been used, you know, for, for a lot of those things. I got, uh, I don't know, 50, 60 registrations in one day and realized that uh, Wake Forest university is now using it to teach, <laughs> human exercise science. <laughs> I love it. And it's, you know, so there's a lot of people with tape all over themselves, walking upstairs and running, a, you know, across the, the, the soccer field. I love that. Yeah. So then the, the more of those videos and images that it gets, the, the more that machine learns and, yep. and, and knows what a good ankle looks like and what a bad ankle, because that's, that's part of our thing. You, you, we swing smarter by moving better. You move better, you perform better. And if a kid's got a bad ankle or a bad shoulder or uh, an unstable midsection or core, then they're going to have a hard time getting into some of these, these optimal movements. They're not going to look like Jose Batista That's right. or any of the other guys, Bellinger and, or whatnot. And it's why it's important to pick your model too. You know, we talked about different swings and different models, you know, sure. at, at, at my point in my career, I'm, you know, Tiger Woods was not a good model for me. He was, <laughs> he was a little too flexible and long. Yeah. You know, I needed Craig Stadler. So. Yeah. <laughs> apples to apples. Exactly. That's right. Yeah. 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 Bad, bad. We'll, we'll end on this. I'll tell people where you can find your stuff. But one of my coaches in at Fresno state, love the guy, big heart. But my freshman year, I was sitting there with my, my buddy that I'd known since the seventh grade played baseball against and, and with, and we were, we were standing there at the cage watching one of our seniors hit juniors and seniors big tall lanky six four guy was a freaking masher and he's just smashing in the cage but he was super wide with his feet he was like the pool holes model like you'd mm-hmm. you'd say where yeah. he just picks a heel up and go super wide with his feet six four i mean I, we look like we'd be doing the splits and my buddy and i because i'm five ten five nine on a good day my buddy's like five seven five eight so we're t- tiny guys and our coach turns turns to us as uh we called him ace was hitting it in the, uh, in the cage. He goes, uh, just hitting absolute rockets and lasers. He goes, I want you guys to hit more like ACE. <laughs> we're like, what? <laughs> There's no way that we're going to be able to hit like ACE. Cause we're not six, four and be able yeah. to go super wide with our, with our feet. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> Very cool. Well, Chaz, thank you again. I want you to give people a, uh, where they can find you 
where they can go to, uh, you know, Power Chalk, obviously. And then uh, maybe is is there a place they can go to check out this new AI machine learning stuff? Yeah, so powerchalk.com is the site. And I, I've, I've taken up and, I, and, I've, and I've put up a, uh, an uploader at swingtron.ai. Mm. So again, not fully functional yet, but, you know, certainly you can uh, contact me there. And I'd love to talk to anybody and everybody about, you know, what, what you're looking for and how this might add value to you. Yeah, I love that. And Chaz, for, for those of you guys out there, he's he wants that that feedback. Uh, anytime I, ha- I run into an issue when I'm in Power Chalk, uh, he's I mean he's pretty quick with me, or have somebody respond. And the with the new project, I mean he's on top of that thing. So any kind of feedback, please give that because the more feedback, the better. I'm sure there'll be repeat stuff that he hears that he's working on. But this is again like a beta in a beta phase. And I think it's going to be a super powerful thing for parents, parents and and team coaches or anybody wanting to get their, their kid hitting better. Well, thanks, Joey. Thanks as always. All right, brother. Well, have a great rest of your week. Uh, Thanks for coming on and uh, I'll get everything to you that I was, we were talking about in the beginning. All right. Thanks for having me.